Hello and welcome. Good morning, everyone. This is Jason Ulrich with Top Shelf Traders. Thank you for joining us. It's 12 noon Eastern, right on the nose here. We've got a number of folks filtering into the uh, room right now. As always, let's start with a quick sound and visual check. Please let me know that you can hear me okay and that you can see the screen okay, that it's coming through. We've got the questions box open. Perfect. Great. Good to have you. <laughs> I like it, Kumar. You know, Apollo 13 is one of my favorite movies. They got sick of me making Houston references. Um, we're thrilled to have Rob Booker with us here today. Uh, as always, these events are designed to be informal and practical. Today, we're going to be focused on Forex. And as we mentioned in the email, how to systematize your trading. Uh, we conducted a survey across our traders, and the universe is getting pretty large. We have over 200,000 traders that we asked various questions about trading, where they're at, the things that they would find useful. And building in a process to their trading regimen was something that we heard consistently across traders, uh, not, regardless of their asset class, level of trading, et cetera. And so when we had the chance to have Rob join us, we jumped at it. If you've heard his name before, that's for good reason. Uh, he is the host of the Traders Podcast, which just completed yesterday. It's 559th uh, edition. Uh, Rob and I were just talking about how many of these things he's done, and it sounds like it's over a thousand. He's worked with thousands of traders. He's a proven trader, and one of his focus areas is Forex. And so today he's going to be talking about systematizing your trading for Forex. The session is going to be recorded, and by all means, let's keep this as interactive as possible. If you have a question, please just put it in the questions box. I'll keep an eye on that. We'll service those for Rob as we go through, and uh, we'll be sure to wrap up inside the hour so that you can get back to your day and uh, continue trading or doing whatever it is that you're doing. So, Rob, thank you for joining us. It's great to have you, and I'll turn it over to you, okay? All right, thanks a lot. Thanks, uh, Jason. It's great to be here, and hello to everyone. I'm, I'm happy to be with you for a little while today. I don't want to spend a lot of time introducing myself, but I know some of you don't know who I am, and I'm really happy to, to meet you. And I, I love, if, if you know me at all, you know that I love traders, and you know that I love talking about the markets uh, with people together. And, and, and I know some of you maybe don't trade uh, Forex and currencies, so we'll take a look at a bunch of different charts today and try to keep it well-rounded and keep all the principles uh, the same. If you haven't listened to the podcast before, it's completely free, and I invite you to jump over to traderspodcast.com. You can find us on iTunes and SoundCloud and everywhere that uh, terrible podcasts are enjoyed on a regular basis. And as Jason mentioned, we're in uh, episode 560 comes out tomorrow, and I, I'd love to have you uh, join us for the ride. And you can also find a link to my book at the top of the page, uh, Adventures of a Currency Trader. I wrote this book back in 2007. I can't believe that's 10 years ago. I'm about to fly out to Utah and record an audio 10th anniversary edition of this book uh, in the next uh, 60 days or so. Uh, I was a commodities trading advisor for about four years uh, and managed a small fund. It was only about $8 million of all um, high net worth individual money and I did that for about four years uh, and it was all in the currency market but I, I do like to look at other markets as well and uh, that's my website robbooker.com. We'll talk about some indicators today and I want to give you those indicators for free so if you jump over to the website later on you can click on free indicator and that will take you to a page where you can download the indicators uh, for TradeStation, eSignal, Thinkorswim, MetaTrader, even platforms that haven't been invented yet. That's not actually true. Okay, uh, my favorite charting platform is TradingView.com, and most of what we do today will happen on uh, the screen that you're looking at right here inside of a web browser on TradingView.com. And I just want to like, like, if it's all right with you, <laughs> I just want to kind of geek out and get all technical and. And then we'll just um, 
we'll go from there. We'll see, we'll see where that takes us, and I'll be happy along the way to stop and answer a few questions and uh, talk to you a little bit about my journey as a trader and and uh, what's worked for me and what hasn't worked for me and you know the good and the bad. Oh, and by the way, I'm not like the greatest trader in the world, right? I've I've made money and I've managed money, but I've also been a complete banana head, right? I've been the worst trader ever, and nothing I'm about to say today is intended to make you like lead you to believe that I think I'm better than anybody else and or whatever else. I'm just like everybody else. I'm just making my way through this trying to make a living as a trader and um you know, so just to start things off, I just I just want you to know I'll talk to you about my mistakes and and my successes, not not just all the good stuff. All right, I just did a, a YouTube video today and an Instagram little shot today about the following point that I really want to hammer on. All trading can be reduced to these two things. First of all, something happens. We identify that something occurs. Price exceeds a level or uh, goes past a level or a marker, or uh, price crosses a Fibonacci level, or flies into the eighth wonder of the Fibonacci fan of doom, or something like that. You ever, you ever just look at the indicators that you that are available on your platform? Like, look at these built-in indicators. I don't even know what a lot of this stuff. What is the no sure thing, or the clinger oscillator? What the hell is a clinger oscillator? Nate, do you know what a clinger oscillator is? <laughs> character. I don't know what this is, but let's just say every time the Klingon oscillator exceeds the 1062 level. I don't even know what that means. But that's and that's an example. Something happens. The Klingon oscillator reaches warp speed. I don't know what that even means. Then this is what happens next. Now Jason and the folks at <coughs> excuse me, Top Shelf are intimately familiar with this process. That all trading is kind of reduced to a system of identifying that something has occurred and then observing that something usually happens next. Now some of you are saying, well, that's not, <laughs> there's no news in that, like that's not anything new. But so many people fail at trading, including me at the beginning and me every six months or so when I take a stupid trade, they fail when they come, they go away from this model, when they veer away from this stuff. And some people are generally fixated. They get like giantly fixated on something happens. Like, oh my gosh, Apple reported earnings. Or they'll say something like, the oil inventory report was lower. Or they'll just, every day, it's like, they're just racing around like chickens with their head cut off, talking about something that just happened. And Twitter is just a, garbage cesspool of this kind of thing, right? Traders announcing that the the squiggly blue line just crossed the squiggly red line and everybody's got their head on fire now. Well, my success has, when I've had it, has been due to the fact that I observe a small number of things that happen and then I focus on what happens next, usually, and I turn those into systems. And I usually automate those systems so that they run 24 hours a day whether I'm drunk on a bus in Portland, Oregon, <laughs> I should probably tell you that story sometime, and, or if I'm sleeping in the middle of the night or whatever it is, that, that I try to identify something that happens and then identify what happens next usually. And nothing you know, works 100% of the time. And so today I want to talk about one of, and maybe even more than one of those, systems or methods or techniques. This is the US dollar, Canadian dollar, but this could be soybeans or cattle futures or orange juice or orange peels or Apple or Tesla or a garbage stock like Groupon, which is probably worth three pennies right now. I have no idea. It could be any of those things. And on the chart in front of us, let's geek out technically, is a blue line commonly referred to as a pivot point. Now, years ago, I was mentoring a former floor trader from the Chicago options exchange of yelling men who are yelling on the floor, waving their hands at each other. 
and he was a former floor trader and he brought his jacket with him. <laughs> I offered him a thousand dollars for his jacket and he refused, which I, I can understand, but I really wanted one of those jackets. And um, he talked about, he, he got his jacket out and he said, I still have this in the pocket of my jacket. And he pulled out this piece of paper. And it was a little note card, looked look kind of like a waiter's order pad. And it had these lines on the note card. And on that note card were dirty pictures. No, I'm just kidding. He did not draw dirty pictures on that note card. What was on this note card is levels. So it'd be like 123.5. And another level on it was 12.75, or and so on and so forth. And on this card were these levels. And he said, those are my pivots. And I could, and, and they were just, it was an old card. It was all weathered and kind of bent from the last day that he was on the floor of the exchange. And he had written down these pivots. And he's like, man, that was all we ever used. And, I, and he's like, I want to I wanna build a system together. And that's why he had hired me and traveled to my office. Because I want to build a system that uses those pivots. And it was easy on the floor. We would just wait till price got to those pivots. But I just, he goes, I'm just off the floor and I'm using charts and everything. And it just all seems unfamiliar to me. And I was like, all right, Gary, no big deal. We can, we can do this together. And we sat in my office for about a week and we built a system using daily pivots. And that's what you see on, on the screen right now. And that was, well, that was 2006 maybe. That was a long time ago. That's like 11 years ago. And still to this day, I use this methodology and I even automate this method. Um, so it runs automatically. And um, so I want to show you how I did that. I'm going to take some indicators off of my screen to make everything a little bit simpler. I don't really need the ADX on the screen, so I'll hide that for now as well. Ah, that looks stupid if I do that. Let's just leave it there. Okay. This is a daily pivot. I color it blue. I color it blue just so I know it's a daily pivot all the time. And that daily pivot is yesterday's high, low, and close added together and then divided by three. So high plus the low plus the close added together and then divided by three equals the daily pivot. Now there are weekly pivots and monthly pivots and there are even intraday pivots that I use, but this is just a simple form. And most of you already know what a, a daily pivot is, right? I don't need to share with you that. So this daily pivot was not touched by price, right? There's no, there's no price touching that daily pivot. Most daily pivots are hit by price. Uh, this daily pivot was hit by price. This daily pivot was hit by price. Uh, this daily pivot was hit by price. This daily pivot was hit by price. This daily pivot, okay, and now it's gonna get boring. And on Canadian dollar pairs or commodity pairs, 85 to 89% of pivots, are hit on the day they are created. So on the day God creates the pivot, it's hit by price. I don't know if that's how pivots are created, but let's just say that's the way they're created. But 85 to 89% of the time, a pivot is hit on the day it is created. That's a, it's a magnetic level. And, uh, and, and okay, this is, if a pivot forms, 85 to 80 percent of the time it's 89 it's going to get hit by price it even goes as high in some financial instruments as like 90 percent and most of you can grab the daily pivots <clears throat> right off of your charting platform they're freely available on most every charting platform now if you click that link on the home page of my website at the top of robbooker.com and click on free indicator i believe the pivot indicators are included in that indicator package for Trade station and e signal and blah 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 and blah 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 blah. But if I right click on the chart here on tradingview.com and I just type in pivots, I can find the pivot points standard. And I can double click on that, choose a time frame of daily, choose days back of, I don't know, let's go 100 days back just to make sure we have lots of daily pivots on the screen. And then I uncheck the S and R levels. These are support and resistance levels that are connected to pivots, but I hate them. They are disgusting to me and I don't want them. So I just take them off the screen and I just leave on the screen the pivot. And that's the daily pivot. 
Now, 80 to 85 to 89 percent of the pivots are hit on the day they're created. Now, we're going to come. We're we're going to come back to that. We're going to we're going to. Well, you know what? Let's just talk about that right now. Let's just talk about that right now. Let's turn that into a system right now. Something happened. Then usually this happens next. That's how all systems all systems go. That's how all systems are created. We can't handle a system of that magnitude. All right. So this is a daily pivot on the day that it's created. And on the day that it's created and it shows up on the screen, which is at about 5 o'clock New York time, price is down here, away from the daily pivot. Now what do I know that happens to most daily pivots? Most daily pivots are hit. So what I can do immediately is I can draw just a level of support or resistance above a candle and I can wait for price to go above that level and it's going to hit that daily pivot. I could wait for price to be oversold on an oscillator on a short time frame chart and I can buy it knowing that price wants to go up to that daily pivot. No matter where the day begins, price wants to go to that daily pivot. And especially on days where price starts out the day below or above the daily pivot, price wants to go back to that daily pivot. Now, I'm here, and, and Jason is hosting this webinar. And Jason is, it was a professional investor and worked at an investment bank. And I'm not going to get anything, I'm not going to get anything past Jason or any of you. You're all intelligent people. So I want not to today. Not today, Rob. Just <laughs> not so today. We're clear. I'm so on I'm my not, game today. That's hilarious. I so I'm not here telling you, oh my gosh, I just invented the greatest system ever. But what I'm saying is I found that there is a propensity for what I've just described to occur. And I can turn that into a system. All trading systems are are simple probabilities associated to cause and effect or a catalyst for an event or whatever. And that's all this is. So, you know, like, listen, I know you all are smart enough to go back on your charts and check this out. And I want you to do that. I want you to be in touch with me. I want you to uh, communicate with me after this presentation has occurred, or we can all come back and we can all, uh, we can all talk about this again. But this is the building block of what has been one of the most successful automated strategies that I've used. And it's this simple. It's just not that complicated. That price gravitates to its daily pivot. Now why is that? Most trading systems that work technically have a, a logical reason uh, coming up behind them. And that logical reason is that all these, all these, you know, sweaty guys got off the floor of these exchanges and and they were out of a job. They closed the exchange down, they locked the door, and they opened up a falafel shop or something at the exchange. And all those people wanted to still trade the markets, but they were out of a job at the exchange, and so they walked in and they sat down next to their computer, and what did they do? They put pivot points up on their screen. And then they put pivots up on their screen, and they remembered what they used to do on the floor of the exchange is that they used to trade back to the daily pivot. And so when they sat in front of the computer, they trade back to the daily pivot. And Compounding the logical reason that this works on a regular basis is that a lot of these people were trading commodities. And a lot of the floor traders were trading oil and other types of commodities. And commodities love their pivots. They love their pivots. And the Canadian dollar is highly correlated to oil, which is a commodity. And so when I look at pivots, I look at commodity currencies, the Australian dollar, the Canadian dollar. The Klingon Darsak. Just kidding, that's not a real currency. Um, well, it's a real currency on a television show, but it's not actually a real currency. Um, and that's the logical reason behind it. Of course, a lot of people say this is what the big boys do, or this is what the floor traders are doing, and a lot of those people are just making that crap up. So, to a certain extent, take everything I just said with a grain of salt, right? You know, just there's a logical reason behind it, um, but over time, we forget the reasons that things are working and then they just work and then we stop asking questions. But I do like to kind of know the behind the scenes. I kind of like to geek out on that. So that is kind of strategy numero uno. We can even go down to like a 15 minute chart here. And I'll reset the chart. 
And we can look at a few examples of this. Um, and not all the examples are going to work, so I just want to be just want to be clear. I'm not I'm not here trying to say that all of this stuff is always going to work. And then we can just put a let's just put a uh, who cares like a stochastic stochastic RSI. What the hell is that? I got to check that out sometime. And then we can um, let's not even let's not even change this. I I think it's one of the ugliest indicators in the world, right? It's just disgusting and ugly, but Okay, let's just do it anyway. So price opens up. I'm just, this is random, but price opens up here on the 11th of September. It's below the daily pivot and hasn't touched it yet. And then price goes below the daily pivot. And the stochastic oscillator goes oversold. Well, let's buy the US dollar, Canadian dollar, when price goes oversold. And let's ride that up to the daily pivot. Woohoo! I have a automated strategy that does that. And it's it's glorious. I, I love the shiz out of that. And then the next day, now it's the 12th, and a new daily pivot forms. This is really at 5 p.m. New York time. And price is overbought. So because it's already overbought, we just go ahead and we sell it, the dollar Canadian, and we sell it down to the daily pivot. Now, can I turn this into something much more complex? Oh, yes. Oh, heavens, yes. I don't know why I would do that. That sounds like it would be a completely stupid and terrible idea, but I could make this more complex than that. And that's a discretionary system. It's the basis for um, an automated strategy that I know and love and have been using for a lot of years. Now, is this going to work every single day? Well, no. Some days, price starts out the day at the daily pivot. Mother. You know, like, okay, so there's no trade. So it doesn't, it, it not only doesn't work, there's just no trade at all. But down here, this is uh, maybe the 14th or 15th. Yeah, the 14th of September. The day begins. Price is oversold. And there's just a, you know, that's a, you, that's going to happen in the late afternoon in the U.S. So you could stay out all night at Club 69. And you could dance your heart away on the dance floor. You could go roller skating afterwards. Can you tell I've been watching The Deuce on HBO? And you could go roller skating with your favorite lady or guy friend after you go roller skating. And then you could just sit down at your computer and you could trade this. Or you could maybe do it before you go out roller skating. Uh, here's another example. I mean, I didn't even plan on talking about trading to the daily pivot today. I just kind of, I guess we just ended up here. Uh-oh, my screen is frozen. My mouse froze. Connection was lost. Now we're connected. All right, good. So we're overbought here, and then we drop to the daily pivot. This is now going to get really boring, right? And then the day, right before the new day begins, price is overbought. And, and, and then by the, by the 18th, when the new daily pivot forms, we've already started to fall. So maybe that's not quite a trade. And then on this day, the 19th, we start the day out at the daily pivot. You can see almost all of these are hit. And then you can see right here, this looks exactly like the day before. A big spike before the day ends and a move down. So some of the traders that I work with plot the expected location of the daily pivot, and we call it the ghost pivot. Ooh, spooky. Did any of you see a ghost story starring Casey Affleck? wearing a sheet. I just watched that the other day. My wife did not like that movie. <laughs> thought that was pretty dumb. Did you see that movie, Nate? I did not see that one. It's I a slightly it. alarming visual there. Casey yeah. Affleck wearing a sheet. <laughs> exactly. And that's all I, like I was it, I'm writing this down. I'm going to check this out. <laughs> yeah, I kind of I liked the movie, but I'm not going to lie. <clears throat> it's only for certain kinds of people. Um. Hey, a uh, couple of questions that came through when you get just to break into yeah. the action, Rob. I can feed those your way, or just let yeah, me. Yeah, let's know let's let's. This is a great time to tackle some questions. Okay, perfect. Uh, we've got a, here, a few here from Kumar. He's asking, "Are you a scalper or an intraday trader or a swing trader?" And mm -hmm. you probably have covered that since. Yeah, let's. Um, yeah, so this is a great question. So, uh, ro I'm robot. I'm a robotic trader, which means. I have a number of robotic systems that are running automatically in the background, some of which do short-term quick trading like scalping, uh, which is very difficult to do 
manually, or it is for me because I'm a psychological wreck, so it's not good for me. Um, <laughs> and then other strategies that I employ in a in a robotic manner, like manner like a trend trading system on the dollar yen. That's a long term system that gets in trades and holds on to them when they're good for weeks and weeks and weeks at a time. So it's a mix of both. Got it. Got it. Uh, you also commented that uh, it looks like you're taking counter trend trades. Is that true? Um, it depends on what you say the trend is. Um, let's let's show an example of that. I'll just use one of the examples I pointed to just a while uh, a while ago. So let's take this example on the screen in front of us right now, where the day opens and we're oversold, and we need to get back to the daily pivot. You could say, "Oh, well, we're buying it. That's counter trend to what it was doing." Well, what if the day before, though, the price was moving up? So are we trend trading or are we counter trend trading? And in other words, all successful trend trading is trading with the trend on a pullback, which means you're counter trend trading on one time frame and trend trading on another. So I don't like to, although I'm going to answer your question, which is short term counter trend trading, it could, the trade that you're taking could follow the longer term trend. So it's very hard to answer that question without providing some context. Got it. Okay. Perfect. We, we have a few others. I'll let, let you keep tracking, uh, tracking here. One question came in about uh, uh, how are pivots calculated. I think you covered that as well. Yeah. So if you watch the recording, you'll see that um, we talked about pivots are calculated using yesterday's high, low, and close add it all together and divide it by three. That's a daily pivot. So it uses yesterday's price to calculate today's pivot. Um, those pivots, once they're created, don't move. They can't shift. They're not dynamic. They're not constantly updated by price. So once it's there, it's fixed in time and permanent, and you can depend upon it once it's there. And I like that stuff. In trading, I like to know that I can, I know, like to know where something is and where it's going to stay. Perfect. Okay, okay. great. So well, let's I'll say that, yeah. I was just going to say, I'll let you know when we have more of the surface. Okay, that sounds great. Um, let's do, I'm going to switch to a different currency, but we could look at, we can even look at stocks when this, uh, when this happens, but let's look at, um, let's look at the Australian dollar. Let's we'll scroll back into. You can see almost all of these pivots are hit. I mean, almost every single one of them is going to be hit on the day that it's created. And the Australian dollar is a commodity currency. That was hit. 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 Okay, so you get the idea. That's why I do this. Um, I'm going to go back in time and find one that wasn't hit. Aha! Here we are. Now we're going to go a little bit more advanced. We're going to get a little bit more sophisticated and we're going to take this a, a step further. So uh, on this day, the pivot was hit by price. This day it was barely touched by price and that's enough. But on this day, on the 12th of July, just randomly picking this one out, the pivot was missed. And I say a pivot is missed if the day is complete and it has not been touched by price. No candle and no bar touched that pivot. I call that a missed pivot. And that means it was not touched by price on the day it was created. Now, a missed pivot is, in, to me anyway, the first one in a series meaning not preceded by any additional missed pivots. All the, all the preceding ones in recent memory were all hit by price. The first in a series of missed pivots is an early warning sign that a trend is coming. And it's an early detection on a trend. And what I can do in the case of a missed pivot is I can place a line across the top of yesterday's price. And I could say if price launched upward missing its daily pivot, then on the next day, if price breaks above those highs, it is likely to be the beginning of a trend, or it can be the beginning of a trend. Now, I'm going to say something bold, but I don't think it's outrageous. 
missed pivot trend move. This is what we talked about earlier. So we're all we're coming full circle here. This is what happened, and this is what usually happens next. Now, when I say usually, that's not a guarantee. Trading involves substantial risk of loss. Uh, past performance is not necessarily indicative of future success. And so no system is perfect. Every system will go through a losing streak or a drawdown. I mean, I wish I could avoid that. And if anybody can, then, you know, I don't know, then that's great. I mean, I, can't, I haven't found a system that is perfect. And this is, this is the same way, that oftentimes a missed pivot will lead to a trend. And so what I like to do is try to grab that trend. And it, it might work once a month or once every 60 days per currency. But when it does work, I can catch a tiger by the tail, so to speak, and grab something and let it rip. So I could trade the breakout above the highs, place a stop loss underneath the daily pivot, and then just ride that thing for as long as I possibly can, which you're seeing right on the screen in front of us right now. It's just a rocket ship. The Australian dollar just took off and I could place every single day that a new pivot is created, I could place a trailing stop underneath that. So I could move my stop every day underneath the pivot point. So I've got a stop that's trailing and then once it hits that daily pivot point, I'm out. Now you might have your favorite way of trailing stops or looking at the extension of a move or whatever it is that you'd like to look at. And that would be up to you. This is another very reliable, for me, in my experience, methodology, and this time it's for systematizing or creating a system out of something that seems to happen every once in a while. This happens far less often. We don't miss very many pivots, so it's not as, you're not going to get as many trades out of it, but when it does happen, it can be really interesting. I haven't looked at Groupon in a long time. But I just want to take a look at that before we go any further. And I just want to see, I haven't looked at it in a long time, so I don't know if what I'm saying is even accurate. But I'm going to guess that we could find a missed pivot, draw a line across the highs, and that we're going to move up from there. And we do. Now, if a second day's pivot is missed, that's not a reason to start trend trading. It's only, in, it's only when it's the first in the series. We could also take a look at, I don't know. I don't know if Tesla's gonna work. I, I haven't looked at Tesla in a long time. Uh, here's a daily missed pivot on Tesla. And there's the highs for the day. And then it does appear to jump up from those highs. Oh, <laughs> all right, well, that does look pretty great. Um, I don't know if that trailing stop methodology that I mentioned would be the greatest for Tesla because it's such a volatile financial instrument. Um, what's another, what's like a, like a old, standard company like boring company like IBM so here's a missed daily pivot draw a line across the top and that's good that might that could lead to some movement let's see here the first you could do that for I don't like shorting stocks it's just not my thing so I mean you could do this for shorting stocks but I don't know you know I don't know I don't even I almost don't even want to talk about it because it just leads me to just think oh that's just garbage um, there's a missed daily pivot yeah, so for like a, a stock like IBM, maybe this isn't really as great because it's like an old, boring company. So maybe some of what we just talked about wouldn't work as effectively on something like IBM. Uh, so you might want to focus on some of those, you know, Twitter, like a garbage stock like Twitter. I love, you know, reading Twitter, but Twitter's kind of a garbage company. So you could you could see a missed pivot on Twitter and trade it above the highs. That's a pretty substantial move. $17 to 18 bucks, that's five, six, seven percent move. I mean, our trailing stop idea that I had is, is disgusting on a stock. It doesn't work very well on that. But you know, otherwise you get you get the idea, right? We're not not trying to teach you like a every single rule. I'm trying to communicate some principles that work, and then you could go govern your, yourself and you could turn this into something for your favorite financial instrument. I suppose we could look at the the YM, right, the mini Dow futures. Now I'm pretty sure this doesn't work for that. I, I don't know. Okay, well maybe it does. Um, <laughs> miss a pivot, 
break the highs. Well, that doesn't see that that's not really missed until here. I guess you could still do it. Ow! Check a bomb, bomb. That's pretty sweet. Um, every kind of substantial, gigantic trend that I ever saw started itself off with a missed daily pivot. But they don't happen very often, so you have to have kind of a wide range, wide universe of financial instruments that you look at. What about cryptocurrencies? I don't know if this works for cryptocurrencies. Like it, it might not. Um, I just want to find a missed daily pivot. So a missed daily pivot here, and then a, a nice move up. Um, stop has to go underneath the pivot to begin with, but then every other day you can kind of trail your stop up a bit, maybe, um, to trail your stop as it goes. Um, but you want to have a stop in place on these because you can miss a daily pivot and not have it go higher. It can actually, you know, the opposite can happen, and it can be a terrible trade. Let's try to find a one that doesn't work. I mean, this is a missed daily pivot that leads to a nice move. Also, in Bitcoin, you can just basically close your eyes and buy it. Or, I mean, a few months ago, and you'd be fine. Um, here's an example. We miss a daily pivot. Let's say we buy it here. Stop goes under this daily pivot and you barely hang on for that ride. That could be kind of scary. Um, here's a stop out. Okay, we missed this daily pivot. There's the high of the day. Oh, we didn't buy it yet. It didn't break the high of the day yet, so that doesn't apply. Um, here's a missed, okay, this is Bitcoin. It just goes up and up and up forever. <laughs> this is a terrible example. Maybe I should just start trading Bitcoin. What am I doing wrong with my life? It's cause, thank you for, doing this webinar today, it's caused me to have a lot of self-reflection. Well, we only have 20 more minutes, uh, Rob, but we can get into that if you want. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, one quick question for you uh, uh, coming in from Ken. In Forex, what session do you trade? London, New York, Asian, or That's does it. it really matter? Okay, so for the strategy that we just described, which my friend Matt, uh, Matt Lococo, sort of lovingly refers to in his own way, in his own, uh, in his own style of doing this, like the Tokyo Drift. Um, that's really the Asian session, is this missed pivot, or excuse me, this trade back to the pivot. And um, so that's Asian session in Forex that would be in the late afternoon in the United States. Now, most of this stuff for me is just traded with a robot. So the robot could actually execute the trades at any particular time of day. But if I were going to sit down at my computer and trade this, um, that would happen in the late afternoon U.S. time, which is the Asian morning. Um, then I also have a Mexican peso strategy. One of my favorite currencies to trade, or day trade anyway, uh, is the Mexican peso. And that all happens uh, right around the stock market open in the United States. So there's a little bit of it, something for everyone in the currency market because it is open 24 hours a day. Um, there's always there's always something you could focus on at a particular time of day. I had a friend, Russell, who was an antiques dealer, and he used to sit down at the computer at 10 a.m. in his time zone when the London market was closing, and he used to trade for the last 10 minutes of the London market. Um, and he did that for, I think he did that for more than two years. So there's always something, you know, if, you're, if, you're, if you think you might be interested in, in trying currency trading out, it's kind of a nice thing to think about because you can, you can basically pick a time of the day that you're interested in looking at stuff. And we can build a trading plan around that time of day that's convenient for you. Right. All right. Um, any, anything else out there? Uh, Questions, comments, jokes? Uh, Russell Nash, the Highlander. So was that a uh, reference there? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, Bill Lutz. Uh, sorry about that, Bill. Uh, hopefully I didn't butcher your last name. Uh, that came through. And that was one of my questions as well. You get back from Club 69 uh, from a night full of uh, roller skating. What sessions and what time frame should you be dealing with? So, yeah, right. So there's um, 
there's like three, like, okay, so the Tokyo Drift, you know, what we just talked about, the Tokyo is really the Asian session, and that's, that's the U.S. late afternoon, and then there's the London session, which is really early morning U.S., middle of the night even, and then there's like the New York open, the, the currency market doesn't open, but you know, like stock market mm -hmm. open time, and there are strategies that work at all three of those times, um, they just have to have different characteristics. That the Tokyo Asian session will be less active, and so there's not as much of profit potential for big swings. London session has the big swings, but you're exhausted if you live in the states. It's a very hard session to trade, and the New York Open is kind of a nice in between the, the two of those. You know, sometimes not. It has a lot of activity sometimes, and it's super convenient for people like me that live in the central time zone. Cool. Great. Um, we didn't even get to, today anyway, we didn't even get to um, the divergence indicator that I built, but, um, you know, I also do, and then we can, we can, you know, we can hang out another time, but there's also, like, the, the, a lot of divergences in the currency market that we can talk about sometime, and that indicator that's free on the website, it will, you can dive into sort of using divergences to execute some of these trades uh, and whatever else in these sessions. And especially in the Tokyo, the Asian session, that divergence indicator is a, is a really nice way of, you know, here, this is what happened, divergence, and this is what usually happens next, a uh, correction. And um, that indicator is free on the website, so you, you can check that out as well. Maybe just to be safe, Rob, we can put the uh, website in the chat box. Just oh, yeah. Just have a direct link for that. Yeah, pretty simple. Robbooker.com. And, Neil, the, uh, the free indicator will be right there at the top. Yeah, I put a link right at the top there for the free indicator. Um, And that's downloadable for most platforms. I only really use a couple of those platforms. So if if you if you have a favorite platform and I don't use it, I might not be able to answer your questions about it. Um, but uh, you know, most of you, if you have a favorite platform, you'll understand what to do with the file download that you get. Getting a question here from Joe. Uh, hey Rob, are you the guy? with the uh, MACD uh, setup for Forex? Yeah, you know, I did a MACD setup a number of, a long time ago in a galaxy far away. Like, I, like my YouTube channel is basically just like a, I mean, I, there are just zillions of videos on there, and I am 100% sure that I have um, videos on there about MACD divergence and, and, and other stuff um, on there. So if you go to my YouTube channel, I, I put something up there just about every day um, with closed captioning now. So you can watch it at work without letting anybody know you're doing it. But um, there's probably some MACD stuff in there around there, yeah. Um, hey, Bill, yes, this, uh, this session is recorded. We'll send that as a follow-up. That is a fantastic Chewbacca t-shirt you've got there. <laughs> oh, Thank my goodness. Enough. I appreciate that. I have, a full, I have a full collection of um, really unique and hard to find Star Wars shirts. So. Oh boy! <laughs> nice. That's pretty funny. <clears throat> All right, uh, we're coming in on uh, quarter two. I know it's uh, just at the close of the lunch hour. If folks haven't had a chance to uh, get a sandwich yet or, or eat something yet. Uh, Rob, were, are you on the home stretch? I certainly didn't yeah, that's it. I've really, yeah, I just, I've enjoyed spending some time with you all today, and and that's about it. That's all I have. I'd be happy to answer any other questions that come in, but otherwise, I'd love for any of you to take a look at the podcast or jump on over to the website and grab that indicator, or just watch my YouTube videos. <laughs> that would be great too. 
Perfect. Perfect. Well, we'll do this. Uh, we'll send an email with links to all of that, including a link to a recording of the video, so you can get in touch with Rob if you have questions, uh, want to check out his podcast, or ask him about the indicator, uh, figure out exactly where he orders his t-shirts, any of that stuff, and uh, we'll make sure that we get that out. And Rob, this is awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, exactly what uh, we know uh, our, our folks and our readers are looking for. So we're looking forward to having you back in the, the near future here. And, I appreciate um, it. Yeah. Thank you so much. Of course. Of course. Everyone, uh, please look for a note with a, uh, the links to the session, the recording, etc. Please let us know if you have any questions. And for sure, keep an eye out for the next event. Uh, we're going to have these at least once a week, if not a couple of times a week. Uh, across asset classes and, and be sure to also include any feedback you have. Be, we'll pass that on to Rob and we'll also factor that into future sessions. Okay, let's uh, call it good there. Everyone All have right. a great thanks day so and thanks again, Rob. We'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye for now.